Yeah. Shaolin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just recently, actually. Oh, okay. Okay, you have a coffee already? Oh, I don't really drink coffee. Okay. All right, you want to start now or what? Uh, well, I guess maybe a heads up on how you think this will this will go. Well, I um, have a list. That I ask you a question. Don't be afraid. It's just a regular questions about the game, and you can say no to the answers. Like I don't want to answer that. It's all up to you. Okay. But we are gonna have a questions coming from Twitch chat. Okay. Uh, I think. Like five questions on Twitch chat. Um, are you ready, sir? Oh, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we are live now. Um, say hi to the viewers. Hello, everyone. Um, can we know who are you? Okay, yeah, my uh, my avatar is uh, James Jambon Zidane. Um, Fatality. For 12 years uh, next month, actually. Wow, so you started playing like... 2006. Yeah, 2006. How did you discover the game? Um, basically, it was uh, pure coincidence. Uh, I'd been actually playing a, a game uh, prior to this called Tribal Wars, which was just a browser-based game, you know, just something to pass the time. Uh, and after I'd finished playing that, uh, I was looking for something new. So basically went to MMORPG.com and was like just scrolling through the list and just the name just happened to pop out to me. And I was like, Entropia Universe, what the hell? That seems, I don't know, it's just something about the name. So I clicked through and, and read a little bit about it, and the fact that it was a real cash economy was something that really interested me, yep. uh, being something that, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the notion of being able to make money in a game. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll fire it up and try it out. And that's how I discovered it and started playing. Ah, uh, okay. What was your initial impression of Entropy Universe when you first saw it? Uh, when I actually first logged in, it was overwhelming, I guess, like everybody. Uh, you know, I started, and that was like back in the day when this was before the CryEngine and everything, obviously. So you started back in those days, they dropped you off that ship, and you just start, and you'd have you had your, your destroyed OJs and uh, nothing else, and you get off the ship and look around in uh, Port Atlantis, not knowing what the hell was going on. So... I remember thinking that it seemed very overwhelming and I was trying to figure out how to move. And I remember that I'd been playing for maybe two minutes and I was like, oh, immediately, of course, I'm trying to get into trouble, right? So I'm like jumping <laughs> around and trying to do this. I ended up hopping over one of these like walls that they had there and I was stuck and I'm like, oh no, I've broken the game. I haven't been playing for two minutes, right? right so I'm like yeah. freaking out going, oh, I'm gonna have to like create a new character and all this stuff. Right. And I remember messaging being like, oh, what do I do? And People were like, oh, just push T. And then from that moment on, I realized that chat was going to be my friend. I started asking lots of questions on how to do everything. And, uh, you know, it's it started off pretty good. But uh, I think it was most interesting was the, the notion that you could uh, make money playing. And I, I remember when I made my first couple of peck through sweating and selling it and was like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to make tons and of money playing this game. How and, much you know. sweat back then at 2006? Uh, Geez, I'm trying to remember how much sweat was going for. I think it was like seven ped or eight ped a K is how much it was going for. But back in those days too, that was uh, when you would get anywhere from two to 21 bottles, I think. 21 or 22 bottles right. every time you do it. But it was also a lot uh, more tedious than it is now. You have the little 
the little tool now, which is cool. But back then, you had to right. like warm up with the whole mind force thing <laughs> and concentrate, and then you had to do the pull thing, and then hopefully you got something from it, right? All right. So, what is your uh, main activity in game? I'm sorry, what? What is your uh, main activity? What is your profession in game? Um, well, well, right now it's it's mostly hunting. Uh, when I started, though, I was big into mining. I remember when I first started playing. I guess was trying to figure. Okay, well, if I'm gonna do this, which is the most profitable profession to go for? What's the the best? So I did. I remember I did a trial, and uh, I think I had started off looking at hunting. So I grabbed some gear and uh, and went out and then was trying to track what my returns were and back in those days too there was a lot of no looters right yeah uh yeah. you know like every other mob was I a no looter that. yes so i remember doing that and going well this sucks you know like everything you shoot all this thing go through this and then you get no loot and then uh figured that there you know there might have been something uh yeah. better than that so went with mining and i think i got hooked to it and drawn to it because I just went outside in, in Port Atlantis and was dropping bombs just in the immediate area right there. And I think the first claim I ever got was an ample. So I start pulling the thing up. And I didn't know about claim sizes at the time. I didn't know anything like that. I was just like, well, how much am I getting for this claim? And I was like, well, I got like, you know, 16 ped. And I'm like, this is definitely the way to go. So not realizing, of course, that amples are, are quite rare. They're not really the, the thing you're going to get all the time. But um, did mining for the first... Mm, three four years maybe five years uh in game yeah so that would be like 2006 to 2011 and uh it was doing quite well as mining i uh, i did it as, as the primary thing and would do a lot of uh unamped mining to start with and did a lot of mining up at club never die at the time which is now foma yeah. uh, and then uh as as i found that uh loot started tapering off uh, for me but with the strategy that I had I started going more with hunting because I was also connecting with more people in game and and mining is very much a solo activity so I started making the switch to uh, hunting and now that's kind of what I do primarily because hunting has been the most evolved profession in Entropia <laughs> as far as I'm yeah. concerned I mean all all the changes and everything are, are geared towards hunting so we will go to that thing and I need your opinion about it uh, but um Give the viewers an idea of your best gear right now. My best gear right now? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's not anything too spectacular, really. I mean, I've got uh, my Viceroy set, which I've been in the process of turning into modified, okay. so I got an oh, adjusted a, piece. It's a modified, okay. It's going to be. I'm, we're, I'm in the process of oh, it, so okay. I've been upgrading pieces slowly, trying to get nanites at a reasonable price because they're kind of all over the place right now using a, a limited persis uh right now with a set of five b's mm -hmm. um i've got mostly i've been using the uh, ar matrix uh limiteds for weapons because i find that um they're really the most efficient guns you can get that don't have a huge overhead you know i, I generally try and keep it reasonable yeah those fucking uh, i've got a the fucking crafters who's doing um, our matrix are making money out of it. It's it's <laughs> some of the, some of the higher ones get really high percentage, so I try and keep it whatever I can for cheap, you know. Yeah. Um, I used to before uh, a couple of years ago. I had a lot better gear too. I mean, I had numerous sets of armor. I had some phantom, and I had you know, uh, I would always be running with various. Uh, various plates and stuff i had five b's and six a's and uh, i had an adjusted viggy set uh, but ended up selling it because uh, i had to cash out some of the stuff i had i needed some money in real life for a while so i'm kind of just been reacquiring things yeah. i also had an unlimited uh, l1100 e um for a long while loved that gun it was great yep. uh and then had to get rid of it and then wanted to reacquire one but they're so hard to find because there's only like six or seven in the game and once people have them they never want to give them up <laughs> but uh okay. you know right now just basically uh, i've been running with mostly limited for gun and trying to switch over to doing more melee so i have uh, a sankra corrosive dagger uh, tier six that i recently acquired with uh, a melee trauma amplifier six so that's kind of what I've been gearing up to go towards. 
All right. I would say that's probably the best stuff I got. Here is a fast question for you. Uh, what is your highest loot in game? Looter profession. People are gonna laugh because I haven't no, no, spent what, what much is your time. Highest loot. Highest loot. Oh, my highest loot? Yeah. 162,000 petter on uh, explosive projectiles. Whoa. And I know everybody's gonna be like, oh! oh <laughs> explosive projectiles. No, like me, you know, everyone's complaining about explosive projectiles destroying the market. But, you know, you made, you made an ATH about, on it. Hello? What? What did you say? No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> you made you got an ATH on explosive projectiles. Uh, lucked out there, really. Um, you know, at the time, uh, I was not really playing that much. I was coming in and I was selling some of the stuff I had and trying to chip out a bit. Uh, at the time, just trying to pull money out of the game, and then had actually ended up accruing nearly 10,000 ped worth of stuff that I was selling and I, I decided I was like thinking about it and I'm there seeing all these people hitting hoffs on, on explosive projectiles and I'm there with 10,000 ped going you know do I cash yeah. it out or do I just go nuts yeah. you know so basically I uh, decided ah time. screw it what the hell <laughs> but and uh, lucked out how much 106,000 162 162. Okay, guys, we have an 80 age here. So, I was, I'm so curious because I didn't hit an 80 age. Is it the same as the haw? The swirly thing? Is it it's like, exactly the same. It's like more orange or something? <laughs> no, I would have thought there would have been more to it as well, but it's just the same as a regular haw. And, uh, you know... The difference until you see it actually pop up and then you you have to do a double take because when i hit it i had to actually count the digits that were in it because i was like oh i hit a five digit and i was like wait a minute no there's an extra number in there mm -hmm. somewhere and i was like oh my god six digits All right. so uh your favorite mob jeez um just one hey i don't know if i have necessarily a favorite Chirpy. One that I always go back. I think uh, I I always fall back on the Aatrox. It's a good standard mob that I go to. So I say that uh, you know that's probably yeah. just very simple. You know I don't really do anything that's uh, that's too nuts that I'm like oh I have to uh, I have to grind out on these. Most, and I think the reason why I don't have a favorite mob is because as far as hunting goes, I still haven't hit anything really massive in terms of loot yeah so i think as soon as i do i'll be like yeah this is the new favorite mob but for the time being it's like ah, i don't know you know it's it's yeah it's still up for up for grabs uh, favorite planet oh no i actually no i was too quick to, to answer that i would have to say that rocktropy has got to be my favorite planet because the people on Rocktropia are fantastic. There's actually, it's almost like it's its own society. And, uh, I heard that. You know, I heard that. When I went there, there were like, even they are not in the same sock, the community is great. Yep, it is. Because they have like uh, their own global chat that's on there. And it's always the same people. They're really friendly. Uh, and it's it's almost like a you know an unofficial society of everybody. Everybody kind of knows everybody else, and I really like the planet a lot because um, stuff to see on Rocktropia that a lot of people don't realize. And there's a lot more opportunities, especially for new players, uh, to be able to make easy money. For example, um, the docks where you can go and get free barrels of oil. A lot of people don't even realize that you can go there. I go there routinely and just, you know, every once in a while when I'm there and I take five minutes run through and I'll get, you know, mm -hmm. 20, 30, 50 pack worth of oil. Nothing fantastic, but, you know, it fills up the uh, the engine so I can fly around. But um, uh, definitely, they have a nice range of mobs and, and activities that's on there. Yeah. You've got the instances you can do um, that y y you can't really do and, and, uh, and like course. on Calypso. Rocktropia have the beers. 
<laughs> Which is great. Okay, uh, who are some of the players in EU that have inspired you to progress in game? And I know you started in 2006, but you know, you are looking. Oh, on wow. Thing. Yeah, there's been a lot of names that have, have uh, gone over and, and different people that inspire you. I guess it's been some specific names. And what's kind of neat, too, is when I was mining at the time, uh, there was actually an avatar, um, uh, Uberhofer. Mm -hmm. um, he was actually in my society at the time later, but um, I had seen him hoffing a lot. And uh, I was like, oh, man, I thought he was a really good big uber miner that really inspired me to try and get better because he seemed to hit a lot of stuff. Um, I didn't really know him, didn't really, hadn't met him or anything in game. And then what's kind of funny is that fast forward many years later and I ended up being in the same society with him and actually talking <laughs> with him and going on yeah. hunts and stuff. So it was kind of yeah. neat. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. All right. Yeah, so, I mean. In your opinion, um what would be some changes you'd like mind darks to make in the game <laughs> oh my god uh well there's a, a growing list of things i mean it's really hard to, to pick one or two things that yeah, don't, don't, i would like them to improve but don't see the the chat bug or something <laughs> like you want to improve <sighs> something well let's see if if i had to boil it down to one thing yep they, they really should spend the time trying to fix this or, or make this better. I would say that they need to on um, content that doesn't necessarily require such an outlay of money. And I know it's it's weird to say that because it's a real cash economy and it's like, oh, and you, you want to have this uh, and that. But I think that for the sustainability of the game uh, to continue with growth, they, while the real cash economy idea was fantastic and it was something that uh, is really a good draw and keeps people here, I think they can't walk away from the notion of how powerful it is to have free content uh, and, and things for people to do that doesn't require uh, a constant steady spending of money. Yeah. They have missions in the game, but I find they're not really missions. They're more like achievements. Oh, grind 10,000 of this mob. Well, that's not really a quest or a mission. It's just everybody goes and does the same thing. You accept all the missions, and then you just let them go in the background as you play the game, and then you're yeah. like, hey, I just happened to kill my thousandth whatever. I'm going to go collect yeah. my little reward now. I think if there was more of a focus on quests that actually did stuff, like interesting things, like uh, it could be anything that was a little more uh, engaging, you know, and, and trying to... Uh, allow people to go and, and find things like for example what if you know they could they could do more things like you know people go for fruit walks and they do sweating but what if you could walk around or or what if people could loot things like treasure maps you know that had no tt mm. value and then people could use those and you look at it and it has a snapshot of some scenery in the game and somebody has to go around and like, find uh, that spot yeah. and when they do that with the treasure map they actually find like something that's, which could be like a storage box yeah, yeah that's interesting yep so just little things like that that you know they could find these new types of strong boxes that could be sold to somebody else or whatever things that are a little more interesting that that don't require you to have to constantly be doing a steady spend of cash so people the that are broke grind. people that haven't put a bunch in <laughs> that's right they don't have to constantly be you know yeah they I can do that. things like that all right uh, is there any advice you'd like to share with our viewers right now? Um, as far as advice goes in playing the game, uh, it depends. I mean, advice for new players starting off, it's, uh, you know, you got to stick with it and don't expect too much too soon. Um, it's definitely a hobby that's going to be something you do for many years going forward uh, if, if you're going to do it right. Um, success doesn't come instantly. I agree. I agree. Read a lot uh, on the forum, and specifically, you got to be careful what you're reading because there's a lot of misinformation there too. But there's a really good post about uh, bankroll management. Mm -hmm. I saw that. As well as uh, like risk of ruin and understanding those basic concepts. Um, 
come into the game understanding that the the best way to profit is uh, not so much trying to to hit the the big hoffs and the big the big loots, but being able to have sustainable gameplay where you're um, you're breaking even most of the time. So it's very much a matter of having the amount of money to support your bankroll and being able to. I think I think the the number is uh, like a minimum of five hundred per hunt. You got to be able to kill at least five hundred of what you're going after in a single hunt to be able to have a, a consistent return that's not completely all over the map. And you want to be able to go for. Um, I think as as part I'm trying to remember in that thread, it's like maybe sixty days um, worth of straight losses of you know, 5% or something like that mm -hmm. in order to, to be able to um, balance out your returns. Okay, um, so. I, I heard a story from you and this is a cool story guys that <laughs> I want him to share it with you. So, your wife right now. Yep. How did you met her in game. Uh, I actually, yeah, I met my wife in game, and again, just fluke that happened uh, right after I had uh, started playing the game. I think it was about two weeks in, maybe somewhere around there is where I met her, and uh, I just happened to be up at uh, again FOMA now Club Never Die at the yeah. time. And, uh, you know, if every once in a while you go back to the main control room, and I kept seeing her there, and her avatar was just standing there dancing. Wow. <laughs> like, so, I, like, for for about an hour, she was just there dancing. And I I came back, and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I messaged her and said, you know, what, what are you up to? And I think, uh, I don't remember exactly what I had said, but I do remember that I gave her a tip of, like, two ped, because I was like, oh, here's a tip for you, you know, because you've dancing. been dancing. and for dancing. <laughs> for dancing, right? <laughs> right. And and a good way to, to break the ice. You don't, have a, <laughs> you don't have a clue that she's a she or he's a he. You know, I mean, you just have to. Ass I assume everybody in the game. I know it's maybe not right, but I assume every avatar is is a guy, even if yeah. it's a female avatar, because a lot of guys are female avatars. Yeah. Um, so, but it was like, oh yeah, here's a tip for you, and just uh, so what happened you know, started chatting. Tip? After the tip, what happened? Just started chatting and asked what she did, and sort of just trying to connect and saying, oh, I started playing a little while ago, and she was telling me that she had played. She had joined about a year before I did. So we started talking about that and just basically was asking, oh, what do you do beyond dancing? You know, what's, what do you, what's your profession and game? And started telling me that she did hunting and uh, we added each other as friends. And then that was, that was the extent of it. You know, it was just a quick five minute little chat with some random stranger that we've all done and added as friend because why not? Yeah. And then uh, as I started playing and I was globaling and she'd message me and grats me on, oh, congratulations and thanks. And, da, da, da. and it was that for uh, a little while. And then we started just, I started asking a couple more questions as I started to become more interested in things like hunting and, and team hunting because mm -hmm. I'd never done a team hunt before. And she said, well, you know, you can join us, our society. We go out for team hunts. So I said, okay, well, why not? So I started joining their society and we went for team hunts and we start chatting through that. And then, um, it sort of just went beyond that. It her, something like that. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Oh, same time back. All right. Mm. So you tip her two pets, and then you started globaling. Yeah, uh, I started globaling, so she was messaging me and gratzing me on hitting little globals for mining and stuff. And then uh, just, we would usually chat for a moment or two after she would message me saying grats and would just ask how she was doing uh, in-game and if she was hitting anything. Right. 
as I started to get more interested in hunting, uh, basically, I had never been on a team hunt, so I asked her about, uh, you know, if she'd ever been hunting. And as I started and, to get more interested in hunting, she message that uh, um, she said to join her in the society because they uh, they went out and did uh, team hunts all the time. So I decided, okay, sure. We went uh, went together with the society, which was a uh, at the time it was PE Addicts was the uh, society. So I went out and started doing uh, little team hunts there, and then started doing chats on Skype because it was easier than typing in the chat yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, while we're hunting, right? So, uh, and then it kind of just branched off from there because we wouldn't just be talking about stuff in game. We started talking about things that were going on, like what we did in real life, and uh, you know, other things that we like doing and stuff, and branched off beyond that and we started sending messages back and forth on the forum and uh, after about six months of just back and forth and after actually it wasn't even six months before that I think we were doing team hunts for maybe a month and then the invite to join the society uh, came because I wasn't really in a society at the time and then in the society we started talking a lot because it was easy with the society chat and then um, after about yeah six months or so uh, that I was in the society and we were talking and talking in the society and sending messages on the forum and doing Skype conversations of just uh, you know casual chit chat. Decided, hey, well, you know, why don't why don't we meet? Uh, I was flying out from the west coast where I was living at the time to the east coast, and since she had lived just down uh, in Massachusetts, which was uh, not that far, I figured, well, you know, I could swing down there and and visit for uh, a yeah. few days or a weekend or whatever, and then go back up for the trip I was doing out to uh, to Ottawa. So we decided, okay, and then uh, planned it up, did the plane ticket, and I'll tell you, it was it, it felt crazy at the time. <laughs> Uh, to, to be going out and meeting someone in game. I mean, we'd done yeah. Skype chats and video chats and everything, yeah. right? So I knew she was who she said she was. I wasn't going to show up at some burly it, guy being like, all right, let's, uh, double, let's do double. this. You know, no, like, hold on. Before that, before meeting her in, in real life, did she show you some pictures or something? Oh, it was just video chat. Uh, actually, oh, no, that's, okay. she did. She sent me a picture uh, that was actually on the forum because th there was actually a thread on the forum of uh, show us your face and a lot and, of members yeah, would upload pictures yeah. of themselves. So she had one that was on there and she linked me that. And then as we started doing Skype, we decided, well, hey, we can do video. We might as well. So we started doing video chat. So we had seen what each other looked like. Uh, I had sent her a picture too at the start, and what's funny is at the time, the only picture I had was like a, a high school uh, picture, like a school picture, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of pictures of myself. Now, I mean, it's. I know what you, you mean. Know, you, so. you, you need to pick the best out of the picture. I was like, this is a professional <laughs> picture. It's it's a bunch of years ago, and she's looking at it, and she's like, oh my God, you know, at the yeah. time, she's like, how, how old are you, right? Like, are you like some 15 year old kid or what? Yeah. But uh, yeah, so. So it, you met uh, her. You met her in real life. Her and met in real life, and it was, uh, you know, is it, it, it is, wasn't really awkward like, at all. Is it like uh, first love at first sight? First, you know, there's the I, feeling that oh, this is the girl for me. It kind of was. I mean, there was. Wow. I mean, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> see her at the time. I was like, I'm gonna marry her. But I was like, yeah. I felt that taking it to the next level of becoming like a couple was was wow. definitely there. There was that connection because it was just so comfortable after talking so long and, um, you know, just having that rapport already when I showed up. So wow. was there, and she took me around town and showed me all sorts of stuff, and you know, we just. Interaction of EU was interesting uh, between the two of us and, and being uh, there and, and being able to talk and just, you know, kind of went from there. And, and uh, after the visit, you know, we decided to, to be a couple and, and, uh, and to visit more and started making trips down frequently and, and staying for extended periods of time. I uh, was doing visits for, you know, several weeks to a couple of months at a time. I think we, we were kind of dating uh that way for about a year and uh just one night i mean uh, when i when i asked her to, to marry me uh it was just wow. it was not traditional at all it was uh you know it's a random just, thing like it was uh, at night time and I, I think it was some specific day i don't remember easter yeah it was easter uh and we're laying there in bed and i just asked her 
right there. It was nothing fancy, nothing, you know, there was no elaborate thing or anything, which is kind of a letdown for some people. Might be like, oh, but. Uh, is it, oh, and she said yes. Jamba, so. is it a Christmas ring, a summer ring, or a Halloween <laughs> ring? <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. Get you one of those rings and get. That would have been good, yeah. Yeah. So, how that, long that have you been much. together right now? We have been together for 10 years, married for 10 years today, actually. Wow. It's your History. anniversary today. We, uh, we have some plans to go out. We're going to do dinner and... Uh, no, I, I thank you for uh, saying yes for the interview. I appreciate it so much. And I know people who are watching right now that they can see that anything can happen yep definitely you, well that's it you know you meet lots of people in game and uh you never know there's there's been a few people that i know that have, have met their significant other in game mm -hmm. and it's it's funny because it's not i mean that's not the primary purpose of the game yeah uh, to you know it's not a dating site but uh, a lot of people happen to find others that they connect with and get married and it's uh, it's fascinating, you know. If I, I mean, entropy has been a big part of my life for sure, and has had a huge impact. Yes. And I never would have realized or considered that when I started playing, for sure. Yeah. Okay, can we go on a live stream question? Are you are you watching the stream right now? They are gonna ask you questions. I can take five questions, and you can say no to answer it. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, give us some questions for Jambon. If you hear snorting, it's because I have my pug in my lap right now. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> so. It's, it's Okay, first question is from Euphoria. What's your opinion about couples hunting the other's avatar? In PvP? I don't see a problem with that. That might be... Uh... No, in general, in general. <laughs> like, your wife is gonna use your account and vice versa. I see. Uh, no, we're pretty pretty open about that. Um, we've kind of, you know, if either person wants to kind of do that. Uh, my wife doesn't really play anymore, so I kind of helped her with being able to chip out and sell all of her stuff that she had. Um, but uh, if she wants to play, she can certainly use my account. And we never really had a problem with that. We kind of openly shared access um, if we knew the other needed to do something or um, we wanted the other person to... Uh, you know, check on an auction or something like that or whatever, but yeah. All right. Next question is coming from Sling Dancer. If you could do anything different, what would you change? And what is your best advice for noobs? Uh, if there's anything I would change, hmm. Uh, yeah. If there's one thing I change, I'd never chip out anything. Uh, <laughs> big advice. mistake chipping out any skill <laughs> that is because advice. you think oh I'm done with this game I'm not going to play it I'm going to chip out and then you know give it a few months and you get the itch and then you get back into it and you're like damn it all my skill and you never yeah. get the full value of what it is you get maybe like yeah. a tenth of the value of what it would be to yeah. buy the skill so that's probably my biggest uh, biggest regret not that I've chipped out everything but I've chipped out you know, bits and pieces over the years that I wish I still had because I'd be a little further along. I'm trying to, to gain back everything I've chipped out over the time. Uh, as for advice for noobs starting, mm -hmm. pick a side gig with your main activity uh, to try and offset your cost. Um, if you want to do hunting, that's great. A lot of people pick that as their primary, but you need to have a secondary sort of side hustle to help offset your cost. The right. biggest one or the easiest one is always trading. Um, and some people look at trading, look 
you know look down on it like it's a bad thing but it's it's really not a lot of traders provide a valuable service for specifically lower level uh you know in yeah. in twin you get people that buy small quantities of ores oh i've only got like 20 ped worth or whatever where if you're going to list at an auction you're not going to get much for it so yeah. um buying smaller quantities for a lesser markup and then listing them to try and be able to fill orders or for uh for um you know putting putting in small quantities at a higher markup you need a well, you need a higher stack before you list it an auction. That's how it is. Sometimes, sometimes for certain things, uh, you need to have a bigger quantity. Yeah, like um, but yeah. most part, but for some resources, there is a strategy there where you can still list uh, smaller quantities uh, in auction for a higher markup, and that's actually a little tip that a lot of people don't realize, and they think, oh, I ha markup is not the gospel. If you see a markup, oh, it says it's 107%. That does not mean that that is the only markup you can get for something. That is the average. Yeah. And for resources like list and iron and commonly used crafting materials, most of the sales of them are not big stacks of thousands of ped. Most of the sales are of stacks of like Lower. 10 ped. Yes. Or 5 <laughs> ped, you know, like 10 or 20 ingots by players yeah. that want to just do a small crafting run. And when you list that much in there, you can sell iron for like 112%, 115% because just because of the way the auction works, you put like 10 ingots and, in and I don't know the numbers and, and it's course, worth. People don't have that much money in game to buy that stuff. You, you want to be able to, to make as much money as you can off the small stacks. So if you're starting off as a small level miner, go out, do a run with 100 ped and, and grab whatever you can and then tr look at the auction uh, and, and sort it by stack size and look at the markup. And actually, don't just look at the one thing. Look at the, the drilled down graph showing the spikes. Each mm -hmm. peak in that spike is a sale. And you can see that there's <laughs> spikes where it sells in high markup. And then you can actually list, oh, I only found, you know, 10 ingots right. of iron. Well, list those 10 ingots for 115, 118%. And after the fee, you still end up making a higher percentage, like 108, maybe 110%, uh, which can offset your costs in mining. You can do the same in hunting, but to a lesser degree, because I find that people um, tend to do larger amounts of oils. They don't seem to buy as many small quantities of oils. So mm. that's the biggest tip in, in, in trying to, uh, you know, do a side hustle and trying to manage your, your losses and trying to be able to basically play for, for free as long as you can to build up your skill level. Try and gain as much skill as you can, because the higher level skill you have, the easier it is for you to be able to profit and to at least get a consistent return because yeah. you can use better gear. Yes. Okay. Long-winded answer, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Cap Zero Nung. Cap Owned. I'll just say Cap Owned. What is your advice for skilling up and getting through the grind? As for skilling up, uh, take advantage of skill pills um, wherever you can to be able to 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 get uh, higher levels of skill uh, on the web shop specifically uh, things that I do they have the starter packs if you haven't bought a starter pack the the high level starter pack at least get one of them you, you should, should because you the should. armor is uh, is a good starter armor that gives you some good run speed it also gives you some good stuff that it actually gives you uh, some of the most efficient attachments in the game even though they're really low level the um, what are they called here? I actually I have two of them, the ZX, yeah, uh, yeah. Syncitus and the Eagle Eye and the Ardod. Those are actually some of the best attachments you can get in the game uh, for efficiency. So it's worth getting those. And the only way to get them is through there. Plus, um, when you get that starter pack, you'll also get 50 uh, 50 percent gain chips or pills. I mean, uh, which definitely help. So doing those is a huge uh, benefit to being able to gain skill as well as make sure that you do have all of the missions all of the iron missions for the mobs because you'll gain skills uh, by completing those and to use Entropia Wiki to be able to see what your um, rewards are going to be so if you're looking to specifically skill up something focus on the mobs that are going to give you the skill rewards that you're going to you're going to want. Mm -hmm. you know, if you want to chip up a handgun or a rifle, then yeah. go and specifically try and hunt those things that help you go there. And in terms of getting through the grind, um, it can be tough sometimes. You know, 
You never know. Through. You never but know. You never know what you're going to hit. Try and change it up know. from time to time. Is the big thing. Okay. That's it. This is a tough question that I don't want to ask you. But here we go. Mad Dog 007. How much dollars in put into the game and... How much you withdraw? How much have I taken out? Yeah. Um, I can give you exact numbers. I don't really mind. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, here the, we go. I keep track of it. I keep track of it. So let's see. Uh, just give me a second to pull up the info. Um, I haven't updated it recently, but uh, basically total deposited... Remember, guys, this is a 2006 player. It's a old school player. Okay, so put in direct cash uh, has been about thirty thousand uh, dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. Canadian, Canadian, which would be like substantially less U.S. on average. I guess that would work out to be like yeah, let me yeah. see, thirty thousand. Or thousand US mm -hmm. is basically what's been put in over that period of time, and the total that's been withdrawn in cash has been about thirty-two. Wow! <laughs> oh. So you made money. I did actually make money at uh, the all-time high. Now I factor in more than just the cash withdrawal as well because I have to consider that I still do have gear that has value as well, uh, over and above the amount that's been put in, as well as yep. skill. Um, if I tabulate that out, um, that would be I more. think it would be way more. I actually have a thing that says what my skill's worth, too. Okay, Just well, to tell people what I have is uh, I got 192,000 skill points, um, which would be higher if I hadn't chipped a bunch out. But let's see. Paid money in the game. Uh, skill value, uh, purchase value, if I was going to buy it, would be about um, about eight thousand uh, dollars U.S. Mm -hmm. Would be the purchase value, and then we have the gear that I have, which is probably I don't have that totaled up just yet, but it's probably worth another uh, few thousand ped. So, all I definitely would say I'm up because you know the cash that's there, the total deposit, total pulled out. Uh, not tons. I mean, a lot of people might look at it and be like, oh, you haven't made tons and tons, but it is profit. And I do have the value of the skills, so I'm up that, as well as the 4,000 plus hours of gameplay I've gotten out of it. I tried to ballpark it at about 4,000. It's probably closing in on 5,000 hours of gameplay now. And I've made contacts in the game that have actually led to deals um, outside of... Entropia that have actually resulted in cash as well that definitely puts me way up and beyond the money and the time that's been invested in the game mm -hmm. so as you can see folks that um, you know if you have spent time you just need to spend time in here if you want to make profit like Jambon did and I know a few people who did it they made a tons of money in the game. Mm -hmm. You have a you have a shop in Rocktropia, right? I had a shop on Rocktropia uh, for a while. I was doing quite well with it actually, and then ended up having to sell it because I needed some cash uh, in real life. Um, but yeah, I had a shop and I had a website for it that was set up. Uh, definitely, a, if you have the means, it's definitely a good way of being able to bring some extra cash into the game. But. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, no more questions? Stream? You can ask. I think no one is going to ask. Dun, dun, last chance. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah. 
happy anniversary. Thank you very much. I'm glad to have uh, been able to do this. I'm hoping that I gave some information to some people that may be beneficial. Ten years. Um, I mean, you're doing good with your wife uh, for mm -hmm. ten years. You know, you just met her in game. I salute you guys. Thank you. It's uh, it's exciting. Ten years has really flown by. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, which is pretty wild. So it's gonna be. Uh, here's looking forward to the next ten. <laughs> we'll see kind of how that goes. And uh, you know, uh, Fentropia is still running. We are gonna look <laughs> for like hundred years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, stream. I'm gonna host someone, and thank you, Jambon. If you, if you don't know John Bon, he's a member of uh, Shaolin, the oldest sock I think, in game. But well, anyways, they've been around for about ten years, I think. Yeah. Maybe, no, fifteen years. Fifteen years, I think. Oh, see, fifteen years. Yeah. Older, older than the. Uh... Older than the game. Yeah, they were they were around before <laughs> Entropia was Entropia. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. Good luck and thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me and uh, you know, hopefully uh, it was it was good. Hopefully people you know, see that just an average like you know, just to to say as one final thing, you know, when you asked me to do this, I didn't realize or didn't think that you know, I was really somebody that would qualify to be able to do this sort of thing, you know. No. I'm thinking, you know, you'd want to get the things like the death of fires in here or the no. never guys or the, it's you know, the high end players that everybody knows and recognizes. But, um, you know, it's as great as it is to hear from them as well. You know, it's, it's good to be able to hear from someone that is an average player such as myself, as at least I consider an average player. You know, I haven't made... <laughs> you know crazy amounts of money in the game i haven't gone to the the extreme of having the hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. in the game or having you know right. the the super high end stuff but i think a lot of players are in this mid level where they're very very yeah. similar in the amount of skills that they've had they've been playing for a good number of years uh and some people that have maybe made you know maybe made a couple grand or maybe lost a couple of grand at this point and it's trying to to see what's in there it's, it's for what? everyone. Uh, it's open to everyone. But I want to get the famous players like you because you started at 2006. And we didn't know that, you know, you, what is your experience back then because I started at 2009. Mm -hmm. And so it's, got, it's like three years. I don't know <laughs> what's happening, <laughs> but you made progress. Yeah, a you had chance. a wife. You had your beautiful wife mm -hmm. with you. Yep. All things like I was saying to you, Entropia has given me a lot over the years, and I'll continue to play it as far until it gets shut down until one day, it if it dies. ever does. Until it dies. <laughs> because it's given me so much uh, in my life, uh, very much many hours of gameplay met a lot of great people in the game, made some friends that have carried through to friends in real life, met my wife in the game. I lucked out and actually one of the few avatars that have actually been able to have an all-time high. And actually at the time, uh, when I did hit that, I withdrew it and used the money to uh, do a down payment on my first house. So I was actually able to buy a house with wow. the money that I had got <laughs> in Entropia. So that's something it's given me. I've met contacts that have become business associates that have, have led to deals that have made money in real life, uh, which is which is good and just beyond that. So there's been a lot of good from being in this game and you never know. I mean, when I set foot in the game, I never would have guessed in a million years that I would have gotten out of it everything that I have. So to anybody that's playing this game, Keep playing and keep it as a hobby because it's probably one of the best hobbies you'll ever have. I mean, obviously, keep your spending in check because it's very easy to, you know, lose everything <laughs> in the game. But, uh, you know, just just be mindful of the money you're spending and, and, and keep it as a hobby because it can branch out way beyond just a, 
going out and shooting mobs and globaling. I mean, the, the contacts that you can make in the game and just the experiences that you get are unlike anything else in any other game that I've ever played. So, Thank you so much, Yambon. Uh, hey, once again, if you want to add good Yambon, luck to everybody. If you want to ask questions, just add him. Um, thank you. I appreciate it so much. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. I'm gonna interview another player. And the love story is just beautiful. I just want to hear <laughs> <Thanks>. that. <laughs> I just want to hear yeah. that. Yeah. You're a lucky person. <laughs>